welcome back. I think now we're going to go live over to the refectory where Alan Harding, the head of EMS, is going to discuss the French trip which he so valiantly has organised to take a number of media students over to a French uh, TV college and discuss some of the pros and cons of uh, working with our French colleagues. Would you fancy doing that, Sarah? I wouldn't mind. Hello, that, hello. Me. I know they came. Uh, hello, I think year. I think we're actually there. I think. Oh, is no, that, no, sir. Is that yes, hello. 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 Dan, can you hear me? Ah. Oh. Yes, you carry on. Hello there. Uh, this is Alec here. Um, Alan Harding. <laughs> Firstly, thanks very much for joining me on a beautiful day like today. Um, I want to ask you about the French trip that uh, we have planned for the next month for the media department. Can you tell me a bit about that? Sure, can I, Alex. Plus, I should say bonjour, shouldn't I? Something, something like that. Sure. Something like that. We've got a link with a college over in eastern France. And the purpose of that link is so people can go over there, get to work in a French television environment. We've had this link for about two years now. The French were over here last year. They enjoyed themselves, had a great time. The purpose of this exercise is our students go over there, they enjoy themselves, and also have a great time. OK, now how much does this trip cost? At present, it's 125 quid. 125 pounds for 15 days. Good value for money. Well, that's excellent value for money. And do you get a free bottle of wine or anything like that inclusive? It is a wine-growing area, so no doubt the odd jar will be taken there, I'm, so, I'm sure. Excellent, excellent. OK, now, how about any other trips, perhaps, for other departments or even in the media department? And you know any? Oh, yeah, the college has qu uh, quite a reputation of arranging trips. We've got uh, links with many colleges in Spain, in France, in Germany. This week, we've got people over here from Normandy, We've also got people coming over from Germany. So we're, we're into moving around Europe. Right. And also, by the way, beyond Europe. The principal, for example, is over in the United States trying to make a link there. Good. All right. OK. Um, now, there's one thing, other thing I want to ask you. Um, it's not really on this subject. It's about uh, the favourite star of your choice, perhaps. Now, let me just show the camera this one. Uh, Mr. Cameraman, can you see this? Right, we have a selection of uh, Pamela Anderson and uh, Terry here from Superman. Now, who do you prefer out of these two, you think? Do I have to make a choice? I think if I was uh, going to make a choice, I'd have to have both. I think so, actually. I think Pamela Anderson is the woman for me, though. All right. Yes, absolutely. Right, let's uh, look. We have absolutely no one here. Girls, come and talk to us for a minute, if you would. Sorry about this, everyone. It seems like, oh, we're being wound up. Hey, and enjoy the news, everybody. See you later. Solid rocket ignition and lift off. Good afternoon, I'm Jo Tunnicliffe and here's the lunchtime news. Man United star Eric Cantona and Paul Ince are due to appear in court today charged with assault. Eric Cantona is accused of assaulting Crystal Palace fan Matthew Simmons after being sent off during a Premier League game. He was subsequently suspended by Man United until the end of the season and fined £20,000. Ince has been charged with assaulting another Palace fan in a separate incident at the same game. The actor Stephen Fry is to quit show business, it was revealed last night. The actor is being treated for depression in an exclusive London hospital. Fry blames the pressure of his, and fame of his departure in comedy partner Hugh Laurie, is said to be devastated. Fry began his show business career at Cambridge University in a double act with Hugh Laurie. Fry, a bit of Fry and Laurie is the result of ten years of collaboration. A close friend said last night, he will have to rethink his whole career. A Briton jailed for 35 years in the Philippines for heroin smuggling may have been using a false name to avoid a death sentence. Nigel Gatwood was jailed early this week, but police in London have now arrested the man after allegations that the jailed man had adopted a false identity. It is thought to be the real Nigel Gatwood who had nothing to do with the whole incident. The foreign officer and the Interpol have both mounted an investigation. This is Section 3 
guilty. The man calling you himself Nigel Gatwood protested his innocence when he was jailed for 35 years earlier this week. He claimed he'd done nothing wrong and said he'd appeal. When he was arrested in August, he initially admitted the charge as customs officers opened a suitcase belonging to him and revealed its contents, heroin worth around three million pounds. He was traveling on a brand new passport with only an entry and exit visa stamped in it. And six weeks after his arrest, he claimed that the police had the wrong man. This morning's Sun newspaper allegations indicate that may now bizarrely be the case. It claims the man jailed is in fact Lee Heatley, a man with a string of convictions with drug addictions and currently on the run from prison here. Here, Scotland Yard aren't revealing the name of the man arrested in connection with the alleged identity switch, but they, the Foreign Office and the authorities in Manila, are now investigating the claims. More raids have been carried out on properties owned by the cult, increasingly suspected of the Tokyo underground nerve gas attack. Police, in protective gear, returned to a commune where they had previously found nerve gas solvents. Earlier, a cult member had been arrested. Gas masks and possible toxic substances were found in his car. Ten people died and 52 remained critically ill after a rush hour trains were contaminated on Monday. The Queen continues her visit to South Africa today with a tour of the country's most famous township. She will be in Soweto, the shanty town where thousands of people died during the height of apartheid yesterday. Whilst the Queen was being in the top of the the Duke Bendy was being in the To see for himself the results of political change, the Duke of Edinburgh was accompanied by the first rainfall for three months. He was told how the farmland had been reinstated after the tribe returned and erected shacks within the shattered walls of their demolished homes. British aid is helping them to re-establish their livelihoods. It's a small slice in the aid required, but fumbling at the settlement's bakery, Prince Philip was doing his bit too. Presented with a large cake, he immediately donated it back to the children, asking that they all got a piece. After her warm welcome yesterday, the visit to the sprawling 30-mile site of Soweto, where more than a thousand people died in one year alone, will raise again fears about uncontrollable crowds. But so far, Her Majesty has got into the swing of this South African tour. Today's theme, once again, one of celebration. Farnborough College of Technology is currently undergoing a lot of reconstruction work with the aim to enhance facilities within the college. Among the new buildings will be a new library, a bigger student bar, a lecture theatre and improvements to the car parking facilities are also being made. Comrade Jackson spoke to Dr Kennedy, Vice Principal and Kieran Holden, the Student Union President, about their views. New buildings are being built at Farnborough College. They're going to enhance the college and encourage more people to come to it. I talked to Dr. Kennedy about his plans for the new buildings. Where the trees are at the moment out the front mm -hmm. will be the new student union block plus the information centre plus the lecture theatres. Mm -hmm. There'll be a new road system coming in from Boundary Road into that front part, so there'll be new car parks there as well. And just to finish that, to compensate for the loss of car parking that the new library extension will bring, you might have noticed already that we're building another 100 places or 80 places for car parks down the boundary road side wow. of the, the building. How will this enhance the college? We've always wanted to build more lecture theatres mm -hmm. to accommodate larger groups and teach them and then have seminars. Yeah. So that allows us to do that sort of um, work. The student union block never been big enough for the over 18 population. So that's got to be a good improvement there and we've given a front to the college you know some focus to the the front of the college i talked to kieran holden president of the student union and asked him about the alterations to their facilities well student union's not very comfortable at the moment and uh, there's not really much on offer at the moment but hopefully with the new building we'll have there to attract uh, bigger and better events crystal palace will play holders manchester united at villa park in the semi-final of the fa cup Palace thrashed Wolves 4-1 at the Moulinet last night in the sixth round replay with two goals by Chris Armstrong. I think he'll have a big impact, but I think he got it because the team worked hard, you know. If he just worked by himself, we don't score. Um, everybody played well tonight, everybody's defended well. Uh, we were quicker to the ball, we were a little bit faster this evening. 
and that's why he's got his two goals in. They weren't created out of nothing. Um, you know, we worked hard for him to put them away. Got to semi-finals, you know, I had to try and win every game as the manager. But at the end of the day, you know, I've got ten games to go in the Premier League and I've got to win five or six of them. And, you know, as I'm travelling back to London, I think that will be my main priority now. Uh, we play Manchester City in ten days' time and really this result will be forgotten now to the Cup semi-final. Manchester United closed the gap on Blackburn last night to three points after an emphatic 3-0 win over Arsenal at Old Trafford. Goals came from Mark Hughes and Lee Sharp and Andre Cancelis to keep last year's champions still in contention for the title for the third year running. Arsenal don't have many off days defensively, but you can ill afford to have one at Old Trafford, especially with Mark Hughes in goal poaching mood. The Gunners still hadn't woken up when United struck again. Lee Sharp this time picking up the pieces as the champion took a 2-0 half-time lead. In the dying minutes, Kanchelskis wrapped up proceedings. Three goals, United now three points adrift of Blackburn. After the short break, we go over to Robin Newhampson for the weather. Rubbers, books, where am I going to get it all from? Uh -oh. Hello, sun, sun, sun is what we've been having this week and what a lot of joy and happiness it's brought too. And that picnic weather will remain with us today um, in England and Wales where it should be dry and bright with sunny periods or dry periods. But as we can see, the rest of the UK is not as bright and Northern and Scotland as usual are in the rain for most of the morning. This rain will spread south where it will bring isolated showers to most of those border counties. Now, with this light southerly wind, temperatures will be a, a little above the seasonal average, a high of 15 to 17 degrees down here with the south, and Temp Scotland finally getting into those double figures at 12 degrees in Edinburgh. Now, tomorrow, well, you had better put away those picnic baskets and prepare yourself for this frontal system which will move south to cover the whole of England. Now, this front, which is also associated with uh, low pressure, will introduce colder and more showery weather. Those temperatures we've been enjoying too will change, dropping to lows of 12 degrees down here in the south to 8 or 9 degrees up here in the north. Now onto the rest of Europe. The Mediterranean, as always, enjoying that warm weather with this high pressure continuing to dominate most of southern Spain and Portugal, um, where there will be lots of sun and plenty of warmth. Andalusia will be basking in temperatures of 25 degrees and that little village, Branice, in the Czech Republic will have rain, unfortunately. Uh, that's all from me. Goodbye and enjoy the sun.